thank you all for coming. I have given a decent number of conference talks uh, now over the years, and uh, right now I'm, I'm going through the moment before every single one of them where I'm like, this was a terrible idea, why did I sign up for this? And also a reminder, like, it, it feels like it, but I, I'm not like literally going to die. Like this, I'm, I'm going to survive the next 30 minutes, probably. It's, it's happened in the past. Um, so hello, I'm Kay Wu. It's short for Catherine Wu, but everyone calls me Kay Wu. Uh, I am a senior software engineer at Heroku currently, uh, and I'm here today to share some things I've learned over the years about receiving good mentorship. The slides should be shared off of my Twitter account. The, the handle should be on most of the slides in here. Uh, and as a quick run through of the structure of the talk overall, um, I'm gonna you know, dive quickly into what I think the, the issue is or how I've experienced it at least, uh, you know, the, the usual why do we care about this problem, and then the meat of the talk is of course in the solutions of tactics that I've had uh, figured out up until now. Um, and then there's a fairly extensive list of additional recommended references and resources. So uh, in terms of the problem, okay, part, part, first problem was my clicker stopped working for a little bit. <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit about a typical mentoring interaction that uh, I, I at least often experienced. Uh, oftentimes there was maybe some sort of program that, that where I got matched up to someone uh, maybe a little randomly, uh, and there were definitely good intentions on both sides, uh, but we're still not quite sure what to talk about. Uh, maybe we go out for lunch a few times. In one case, uh, I, in, in college I'd had a, a mentor assigned for all four years. However, at the end, I ended up often feeling like nothing was really different Nothing really changed as a result of that relationship necessarily. Um, and that's kind of weird, right, for, for something that's supposed to be quite important for one's career development overall. Uh, I have a theory that, uh, especially in the tech world, I feel like there aren't that many of us necessarily that have both the experience and the aptitude for becoming really good mentors. I mean, the field overall is really quite young. Uh, but the potential is definitely there. So what might this look like instead? Uh, once I felt like I got better at figuring this out overall, all sorts of things opened up for me. A really big deal would be situations where I got encouragement from my mentors to even consider applying for and ended up receiving job opportunities that I, on my own, didn't think I was even qualified for. I changed careers into software engineering. I got into giving conference talks. Um, and in the most recent example, when I joined Heroku, I called up my friend Jonan, um, who gave a talk about the, his waffle making machine just earlier. Uh, I just, just called him to let him know that, oh, I'm like really excited about this offer, and like here are some of the details. And just on the phone, unprompted, he like forced me into practicing salary negotiation with him for 30 minutes and made me promise to him that I was going to give it a shot. And uh, so I would like to say to Jonan that uh, our nanny's bank account really thanks you. That was like really helpful right there. Uh, so I feel like overall my strategies are not necessarily groundbreaking, but they weren't obvious to me at first anyway, and so maybe there might be some ideas that'll be new for you as well. Overall, what I really want to do is level the playing field a little bit and have everyone walk away empowered to get better mentoring for themselves and those that they work with. I do want to clarify a distinction between mentors and sponsors. Both are very important, and in this talk, I will be mostly focusing on mentors. 
Uh, the distinction between these, if, you're, if you haven't come across this before, uh, is, is something that, that my friend Kate uh, introduced me to. She had a blog post where she wrote about how mentors give her perspective, but sponsors give her opportunity. Uh, and you definitely need both at various points throughout. Sometimes you'll have the same, you know, both roles in the same person. Sometimes they will be different. And I would say the, you could think of the difference of something like, uh, the difference between a, a sponsor who might think of you when there's a really cool job or project opportunity that comes up and says like, oh, this person would be really great at that. Like, let me put forth their name and nominate them for this. Versus a mentor who instead might be someone that you would go to to get feedback on how you can improve your approach to searching for a job overall. So I do want to call out those two, uh, distinctions a little bit because I think they get muddled sometimes and then it gets uh, confusing based on what you're trying to achieve. Uh, and then just some broader caveats overall. Uh, I am definitely here to share what I think has worked for me, but I very much want to be self-aware of the fact that uh, I, I know that I'm in general probably a little bit more comfortable than average uh, just asking for help from other people and, and making requests generally. Uh, if you've ever heard of the ask versus guest culture spectrum, I'm like pretty far on the ask side of things. Uh, I am from the East Coast, so that probably makes a big difference there. Uh, and what that means for me is that in general, I, I end up operating under philosophy where it's almost always okay to ask for something because uh, hopefully people are totally allowed to say no. Uh, that said, I definitely recognize that a lot of people grow up in cultures where that is not really what's done, and there's a lot of importance placed instead on not imposing on others instead. So, you know, in case it causes discomfort of some kind. Um, I, ha I do have a separate talk that goes into this idea a lot more in depth, but I do just wanna call it out because maybe some of the tactics might be a little bit more forward than you're used to or you're comfortable with. Um, I, I mean, I certainly at least hope that I'm still being polite and respectful, um, but either way, I think you can definitely adapt these different ideas uh, for your own interests and strength, get kind of creative, and figure out how it might, it, how it might work for your comfort level. Um, hopefully there'll be time for questions at the end and we can go through that, uh, or you can always find me sometime at the rest of this conference and uh, we can chat and brainstorm a little bit too. So hold up a second. We have to go through the like obligatory, why is this problem even a problem? Why is it that we want to be mentored? Well, uh, if I can be so bold as to disagree with a part of Matt's keynote this morning, I would have to say maybe some of us do want to take over the world someday. You know, like I wouldn't want to rule that out necessarily. Uh, so yeah, this is, uh, this, the, the, the characters on the left here are from an old cartoon show called Pinky and the Brain. Um, if in general you're ever unfamiliar with some random picture or pop culture reference that I'm making, uh, I, like my brain just is making random connections as I'm like frantically trying to pull these slides together. So I do have an appendix at the very end uh, with associated phrases so you can feel free to go look it up more in depth. Um, there there uh, might be some fun stuff in there. Uh, so yeah, anyway. So, so outside of that though, uh, more seriously, I just, I guess I just generally had this, always had the sense that it's important to have mentors throughout your career. But for me, for a long time, it always seemed like something that other people made happen somehow mysteriously instead. Uh, for example, one of my college roommates uh, was just always really amazing at applying for grants. She got a Fulbright. She just like had really amazing recommendation letters from uh, all of her different professors and, and some of them in the same classes that I, I was taking with her as well. Uh, and eventually I learned that she would like actually regularly go to these professors' office hours, which when I heard about it, I was just like, oh, like, I had like the same syllabus, the same schedule, and somehow that just never really occurred to me as a strategy to use to just get to know someone that way and build the relationship there. So I feel like there are all sorts of things that are kind of like that, that once you 
uh, spend some time reflecting on it and pondering it, I think there might be lots and lots of uh, untapped opportunities in front of you. One thing I think that you can get out of mentoring is to just demystify the world around you a little bit more. Um, if you've ever felt like, wait, like, did I miss something that somehow everyone else seems to know a lot about? I feel like mentoring can be a really great way to address that. Uh, as another example, I was once matched up with a CTO and decided in our first conversation that I was just gonna go for it and just ask this like pretty important dude or whatever, like, what even is a CTO? Because that was like never covered in a textbook or anything for me. I, I like somehow missed that part just, I don't know, growing up in suburban middle class New Jersey or whatever. It's not like we run into venture capitalists like all the time or anything like that. And the more I thought about it, it's like, hey, like no one is born knowing this stuff, and the people that do know it don't have like an ownership claim on any of it, so I can go ahead and ask, and then I will know more than I did the day before. Okay. All right, um, another uh, follow-on to that, I think that mentoring is really helpful at, is just seeing what your options might be. Uh, for example, if I know what the options are, then I can figure out what experiments I might want to run, what plans I might want to make to steer towards something, or even not towards to away from something instead as well. Uh, this could be very concrete things like the next project you might work on, but it can also be for longer term things too, like what various different lifestyles and work setups might be like and whether I would be well suited to them or not. And finally, um, please don't tell my kid this, but uh, doing things the easy way is awesome, right? If you can learn something the easy way rather than the hard way, uh, you should totally go for that. Uh, also, the, the reason the, there's a picture of uh, Ali Wong's Baby Cobra comedy special from Netflix here is that she has a bit in the special where she's like, I don't want to lean in I want to lie down instead. Uh, so if I could borrow that bit. Uh, and honestly, like, if you take away nothing from this talk whatsoever, totally fine. But if you haven't seen this comedy special, you should totally watch it. It's like really freaking brilliant. Uh, I mean, totally not safe for work, so hopefully I haven't violated the code of conduct. But on your own time, you should totally go watch it. It's awesome. She's great. Okay. All right, enough, enough setup overall. Uh, let's get into the meat of the talk. I have bucketed my strategies into three general sections. First, um, adapting a phrase from the movie uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn, Glenn Ross. Uh, I haven't ever actually watched this movie. I just like hear it get referenced in conference talks, so I'm just gonna adapt that phrase as well. But the phrase is, uh, always be menteeing. And I'll get into a little bit more about what that means in a bit. Uh, second, find your kindred spirits. Uh, this here is a reference to Anne of Green Gables, a uh, wonderful, wonderful childhood book, which is the story of an orphan who has lots of misadventures and cares a lot about finding good friends and making connections that way. Uh, and third, uh, barring a, a slogan I saw all the time in the 90s, uh, keep it easy, breezy, beautiful. It's really hard to say this phrase without tacking along the cover girl at the end. Um, but it, as I was doing this, apparently like they're not even using this slogan anymore, which like really blew my mind. So like I guess if they don't want to use that, I can use it here. So we're good. Okay. So this first one, always be menteeing. What I mean by this is that all of this process around mentorship, I think it's it's helpful to really think about it as constantly ongoing as well as the fact that, well, at least I always built it up in my head as like a, you know, like, oh, it's super important for your career. You have these really long-term mentorships. And I just really held it up as this like giant big, like, oh, it's like, it has to be like super meaningful, super deep, et cetera, et cetera. But I actually think that there is a lot of benefits of thinking of it and accepting the fact that you can totally have much more short-term goals and relationships all the way up to you know, the, the long-term types of relationships that we often hear more about. Uh, so 
I'm here to say it's, it's totally okay to have some uh, more short-term short, short -term goals in mind, uh, maybe oriented around a particular or topic or goal, such as uh, giving your first conference talk or something like that. That, that could totally be a, a focus of a particular mentorship, and when you achieve that, uh, depending on how things go, like that might be just where you, you wind up, and that's totally fine. Uh, Edmund Lau has an article that I've linked in the references where he talks about the idea of designing a relationship. Um, it, it, it's, it, he's mostly talking about have running effective one-on-ones between you and your manager, but I think the idea is still really useful in terms of uh, going into something, thinking a little bit more of kind of what are we both in this for, what are we going to get out of it at the end. So let's talk a little bit about who you might receive mentoring from. A really common approach I've seen is where there are mentoring programs set up and then you, you kind of get assigned to a mentor. And I've definitely had both helpful um, and maybe less helpful experiences out of this. Uh, but you know, it isn't even always up to me necessarily whether there's a program like this around. Um, and so what do you do then? Well. You might be tempted to approach people you admire and ask them, you know, just like, oh, like, will you be my mentor? Uh, I'm generally totally all about asking people for help, but the direct approach here, I think, generally doesn't necessarily end up being that effective. On the other hand, I feel very strongly that you don't have to just sit around waiting to be noticed either. Like, it just always makes me feel like like I'm back in like at the middle school dance and like everyone is just like standing by the walls of the gym hoping that you know that, that someone will ask you to dance or whatever. Super, super awkward and unnecessary. Um, this is one of my personal pet peeves about Sheryl Sandberg's Lean In book. I mean the whole book is very much about putting the onus on the individual for progressing their career and yet I felt like the chapter there on mentoring very much still had an attitude that you shouldn't go seeking mentors, but you know, instead of like just just do good work and like wait for someone to notice. Um, I mean, overall, I don't have as strong negative feelings about that book as I know a lot of other people do. But this this one point, I definitely disagree with the idea of you know, kind of you know, just keeping your head down until someone picks you to like bestow some mentoring on or whatever. Uh, so, given that, how do you reconcile these two ideas? One way that I would approach it is just skip this part altogether. I really think that people don't have to even formally agree to be your mentor in order to mentor you. Like they don't actually even have to be aware that it's happening necessarily. <laughs> um, because one, one way I would think about mentoring is, is really just like you're going off and learning something from someone. And you know, obviously we do this all the time from books that people write, articles they publish, you know, videos of talks that you you can you could receive so much mentoring from someone and they they they're they're never even really aware of it. And like that's super cool. Like that's that's totally an option that's already out there. Um, the rest of the talk is gonna be more focused on like the more one-on-one -on -one relationships that you would think about, but just wanted to point out like mentoring is learning and that comes in all forms uh, and, and ways of doing things. Um, I, for example, have had a bunch of mentors where it just seemed like, like I, I would always ask them questions and then they would just always answer them. So I just kept asking them some more questions and Later, I was the one that told them, hey, by the way, I consider you a mentor now. Like, and it's already kind of a done deal, and then they can't say no. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> I tricked them into it. <laughs> so what might a good mentor look like? In general, I feel like I'm looking for someone that I might click with on their values and how they look at the world. Um, I you know, like direct communicators, people, uh, people who don't beat around the bush. And usually, I feel like I can sense that just like me, they're probably like on the inside, we're just like really, oh, I shouldn't put that. Uh, on the inside, we're really judgmental people. <laughs> but we, we want to be better and nice on the outside. 
And so I really admire folks that I feel like I've done a really good job of that and I can really learn a lot from them. Uh, but it's not just about having stuff in common because what I think what elevates a friend into a mentor is someone who maybe has had a variety of different life experiences of one kind or another. Uh, the, the best is when it's someone who I'm always curious to hear their take on something because I'll probably be a little bit surprised and I feel like when I'm surprised, it probably means that I am about to learn something from here. So for example, I would consider that I have mentors in a whole bunch of different subject areas, uh, both technical and work-wise, but also, you know, I mentioned on public speaking. Um, before I took the job at Heroku, I, uh, and, and through it, I, I've had various mentors who are more experienced at working remotely, uh, changing careers, uh, I would even have folks I would say I consider like my parenting mentors, you know, folks I turn to and like, oh, like they they seem like they're doing a really good job, and like I would I would like to do more like how how they are. Um, oftentimes, my mentors are people who are doing stuff that I think is really cool, or they've achieved something that I think I might want, and I just really admire them, but. There is an important aspect to this, I think, of having it not be someone that I am just elevating onto a pedestal of some, of some kind. Because um, I, there, there needs to be the opening to eventually come to really trust this person and be willing to be vulnerable with them. It can be really scary to share that you don't know what you want or what it is that you really dream about and uh, when, just, just inherently, I think that uh, there's, there's very naturally a, like a lot of uh, fear and hesitation around that um, and it's, it's really wonderful when you can find folks that you trust and feel safe with and be able to bring those things out into the life and uh, into the light and figure out where you're going to go from there. So how do we find folks like this? Uh, let's talk about networking. Networking is definitely one of those other topics that I always felt like I heard people talk about, but I didn't really understand like how you were supposed to do it. Uh, and the thing that changed for me is when I redefined networking in my head and thought about it instead as just going out and getting to know people and, and making friends, like with no expectations necessarily, just getting to know folks out there. Um, I had a baby last year, and so I kind of dropped off the Ruby like, conferences for a couple years or so. Uh, but so this is my first one back in a while, and it's been really nice just to walk around and see some familiar faces and catch up with people that uh, I've, I've known for like a few years now, which is pretty amazing, I think. So. Um, definitely set the groundwork for that. I think that that is really valuable. Uh, and so, you know, there are lots of specific ways that you might go about this. Of course, like we are at a conference right now. There are, you know, 800 of us here. Um, most of them probably you don't know, right? And that's like a really great opportunity. Um, another way, you know, once, once you go home and we might be a little bit more scattered and dispersed, uh, a strategy that I have found really helpful is when I come across something that I have found uh, really insightful or helpful in some way, to make sure that I actually take the time and give positive, thoughtful feedback about that work. Like, no one, like, everyone wants to hear more of that, right? They, they, they put time and effort into something, they share it with the world, and to hear that someone saw it and took the time with it, I think that that, uh, just like builds really good vibes and in general, I think it's really nice to find ways to like put more positivity out into the world when I can. Uh, I mean, I'm like not totally not above, you know, leaving a bad Yelp review and stuff, but, but it's just, you know, when there are good things, make sure to stop and notice them and, and let those folks know. Um, and sometimes even taking it a step further and saying like, oh, I like really learned a lot from this and going forth and sharing it with others and uh, there have been times when I feel like I've almost become like an unofficial evangelist of some kind for various projects around, uh, like my friend Kate had this, um, and, and, and Chuki, they, they ran a newsletter on public speaking at tech conferences that I always thought was amazing, and I just kind of 
glommed on and like became a real cheerleader for that project. I thought it was awesome. Uh, and finally, another point I want to make in this area um, is to make sure to go ahead and take people up on their offers to help. Um, like the office hours for the professors, uh, they made that time available, and I, I definitely could have took advantage of that a lot more. There are other folks that I, I know in the Ruby community, like uh, Avdi Grimm, I think every so often, sometimes he'll, he'll just sort of be like, oh, it's my birthday, and to celebrate, I'm going to make available pairing sessions for folks or run a discount of some kind, and, and those opportunities are out there, and you deserve to make use of them. You do. Uh, and then on the social aspect of things here, uh, one thing I wanted to bring up that my friend Amy taught me, actually, uh, is to just like go ahead and embrace the awkward. Uh, I feel like a lot of times we have hesitations from trying to connect with folks as we just sort of think in our heads. Uh, I mean, I, I definitely have this too of like I am just like kind of an awkward person and like that's just, oh, I don't know if I want to deal with it necessarily and like what if they don't want to deal with me, blah, blah, blah. But uh, if you think about it, like probably those of us that are kind of awkward, like we really outnumber all of the smooth people <laughs> instead. So like, just just go for it. And, and if it's really, truly awkward or uncomfortable, like just like go forth and, and apologize. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to do that more of, of trying to put myself out there and then just, you know, the, it's very also like tied to uh, therefore needing to apologize if I've forgotten someone's name. But usually like I remember the conversation uh, but I may have like forgotten someone's name. Uh, but you know, I can ask, and then we'll be we'll be in good good terms again. Okay. So now that you have found and gotten to know some cool potential mentors, uh, what next? So maybe you want to reach out and see if they'll answer a few questions or go grab coffee sometime. Um, and at this stage, I think it's all about making it easy for that person to say yes. Uh, schedule with their time in mind. Maybe offering up a location that's convenient for them, or if you're not co-located, co uh, pick a commonly used platform, something they can just say yes or no to, ideally. Uh, in general, I do think that having conversations is usually a little easier than having an email chain thread back and forth, just because uh, being able to talk out loud is, is uh, often just a little smoother than having to like figure out the exact right words to write out. Uh, but th this can vary a little bit. So like while I was on maternity leave, I did try to shift the, the daily schedule was unpredictable enough that I wanted to shift things more into email so that uh, you know I, I, I may not be able to make a scheduled meeting depending on like the diaper situation, right? <laughs> but with an email thread, like if I wake up at two in the morning and can't go back to sleep, like I can type something out and try to give a, a semi-coherent, thoughtful response at that point in time. Um, I think ideally it is also helpful to give a general sense of the topics so that the person you're talking to can think about it in the background ahead of time a little bit and not just be completely off the cuff, but otherwise try to have it be so that they don't have to prepare very much and can just show up. Like the, the, the more you can set things up and, and smooth the way so that all they have to do is just be present for 30 minutes, 60 minutes, whatever it may be, the more likely it is folks will say yes to your request. Uh, keep it breezy, by which I mean trying to keep things just like pretty low key and casual. Uh, I got this really great tip from my friend Kara who had said she likes to do a thing of, of trying to lessen the, the burden or the sense of responsibility someone might feel by asking them to, uh, and, and calling it uh, unofficial mentors instead, for them to, to be unofficial mentors to her. Uh, in general, I think if you can be specific about why you're reaching out to them in particular, um, and keeping this tone of, you know, I really respect your work and would love to learn from you, um, it just helps a ton because, you know, mentors, they're just like us. They get imposter syndrome too, and they may not necessarily know, like, why, why you, why them, why now? The closer the connection in your situations and background, I think the better chance you have generally. Um, you phrase this as well as like, oh, I'm really interested in your opinion because 
dot, 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 fill in the blank there. Um, and overall, you're, you're trying to demonstrate that you have done your homework and this isn't just a generic request of some kind. Uh, and of course, beautiful, I've, I've really just like shoehorned a bunch of things in here to keep it with the slogan. But what this section is about is learning relevant things. So first, it is okay to not know what to talk about at first. Uh, this is totally fine and very common and very normal, I think. Uh, in the next few slides, I'm gonna try to give you some ideas and strategies, but just know that that, again, is totally normal. One tactic that I really enjoy that uh, this computer science professor, Cal Newport, writes about is this idea that uh, you can go ahead and ask for experiences rather than asking for advice. The idea is that people don't necessarily have the introspection needed to determine what really helped them most in their own careers. So if you think about it more as interviewing them on your experiences, you are trying to gather a bunch of data, you talk to a few different people, and then you can analyze for yourself and look for patterns on what the key uh, trigger points might have been along the way. Uh, so I think that that's like a really interesting strategy, strategy in general, and, and the nice thing as well is it doesn't require very much prep work on, on the receiving person's, or the, the mentor side of things. You can just ask them questions about you know, what, what was happening and leading up to some event that you're interested in learning about, for example. Uh, I, so I have a variety of lists of sample topics that you can take forward as well. Um, one is in general things around uh, problem solving, like any current dilemmas that you're facing, uh, what options you might have, and, and maybe getting feedback on proposed solutions that you have, technical or otherwise. Uh, for example, I once uh, was in a situation where I'd been working with a mentor really hard towards getting this promotion. It was like a multi-quarter process of some kind. Uh, and afterwards, I was pretty exhausted, and I went to her and was just like, hey, like, is it, is it okay if I'm really tired right now and just kind of want to take a little bit of a break? Like, is, is that okay? Am I allowed? And she was just like, oh yeah, totally. Kewu, it's fine. I know you. You're like, you, you, you totally, you're, you know, you're still meeting everything you need to do. And by the way, you're, you're, you're not the kind of person that's going to accidentally stagnate because you're just gonna get bored. Like I know you, you get easily bored. And sure enough, two months later, uh, you know, one of these job opportunities popped up and she was like, you should apply for this. I think you'd be awesome at it. Um, and that was kind of the, the start of uh, my eventual move into software engineering myself. So that was, that was pretty cool. And, and it came about because we'd had this relationship and I respected her and trusted her judgment, uh, even on something as, you know, whether I was, you know, what, what I should be doing next and what, what I might be qualified for. Uh, one area where uh, I really love uh, hearing more about how people think uh, is on decision making. Because uh, all the, every single time when things come up and people are just like, oh, this is just like, well, it's like a case by case basis. This, this drives me nuts. <laughs> because I'm always just like, well, well what, what do, it depends. What does it depend on? Can we get a little bit more specific here? Um, because things like uh, technical intuition, I think it, it takes a really long time to build that up. And it's hard to just, you can't really just take a past situation and, and try it to apply it to the present because there will be so many details that will be really different in a little bit one way or another, right? So I feel like asking questions along the lines of what made you decide some certain thing? What were the factors that you considered? Um, and one question I really like to ask is, what would have changed your mind? Like, What are some things that, if they were different, would have led down a different path in this situation? Because then you can, it, it, it takes that past experience and broadens up the potential future situations that you might apply it to um, and, and like gets that much more out of it, I feel. Uh, and then another area then is, you know, as you're building up this, this trust uh, is all sorts of things where you just like kind of get the behind the scenes look at what's going on. Uh, there's an idea I came across recently that I really like that is called uh, effort shock. And the idea behind this is we are so used to movies like The Karate Kid or Rocky or whatever else where there's like, 
the training montage, right? And you're like, oh, the, you know, there's all these clips and like jaunty music playing. And in real life, you're like, that, that is the hard part. That is where like, that takes sweat and tears and what is going on in there? What do I really need in order to, to do something along those lines? So asking, you know, what was your strategy to achieve your goal? And how did you work through a mistake? Because I assure you, other people have made all sorts of mistakes. Like it would, it, I mean, if someone doesn't have a mistake that they can talk about, then they're just lying. Like the, there is something there. And if you have that relationship, you could learn more about it. And again, learning things the easy way, maybe avoiding that particular situation yourself in the future. Uh, and finally, the, this, uh, it, this is where the, the trust and that vulnerability really come into play of asking for fairly personal feedback at this point. Um, when you get to know someone over a longer period of time, uh, sometimes this is even harder in a way because you know, I, I've been working with someone and I really respect their judgment and I'm scared of hearing that I'm not measuring up in some way, right? But if I can find a way to get past that, I think that information there can be so valuable because this person knows me, knows my tendencies, knows what I've done before in the past, and knows where I need support, perhaps, and where I might need to be pushed a little bit. Um, but you know, they, they don't want to hurt my feelings either. And so if I take the step and go to ask them instead of, hey, like, what do you think I could really, like would be really worthwhile for me to focus on learning next? Or um, if I have this goal in mind, what do you think, you know, what, what are some options that I have for trying to improve in this area? Because, you know, these folks, are, they're, they're in this to help you as well. They want you to do better. Um, and if you solicit that for them, it just makes it easier for you to get that information that you need. Uh, overall, I do want to take a moment and make the point as well that you don't have to take all the advice that you're given, uh, just it's 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 not an all or nothing situation. Which like I I would definitely sometimes have a pretty black and white view of it. But uh, all you really need to do is to indicate that you've thought about it. Uh, I mean, if you've if you never follow any of the advice or or if you never make any changes, like in that those before interactions that I talked about, then maybe this isn't quite a mentoring relationship. But I do want to say like you you. You don't have to take everything that you're given. You just think about it and see if it suits you. And so uh, overall, you can really do a lot to make yourself be a great mentee and stand out as someone that others feel rewarded for helping in some way. Um, I, I don't actually mean literal gifts in this case. So a lot of times, like if I'm going out for coffee with someone, I actually prefer to buy my own drink um, and I like a you know, I just don't want to impose on someone when, like, maybe they're they're looking for a job right now. Um, but on the other hand, like, I uh, once I've gotten to know other people more, I definitely sometimes have bought them books, um, or uh, I really love buying uh, baby shower gifts for people off of their registries. This is like baby stuff. It's, it's so small and it's so cute. <laughs> okay, uh, but but we can go a little more classic and you know write some really good thank you notes. Uh, where you, you know, specifically reference what you talked about, how that had an impact on you, and demonstrate that reflection that I've been talking about. And so, so you know, like Matt said this morning, seriously, in our, for our Ruby community, we're trying to form these positive feedback loops here. So uh, finally, then, like a really key point uh, is to make sure to follow up and stay in touch. Tell people how you made use of your advice. Um, I kind of live and die by my calendar, so I literally have a monthly reminder in there, a recurring event that's just like, do a networking thing of some kind. And usually what that really means is just uh, firing up and writing a, a you know, short to medium length email to maybe a former work colleague of some kind or a friend I haven't talked to in a little while and just sort of like, hey, like, here's what I'm up to, wondering uh, how things are on your end, hope you're well kind of thing. Um, oftentimes, like I'll, I'll even include like, oh yeah, I just wanted to let you know that I still think about the story that you told me or like this insight that you shared from years ago, um, and I think that that can be something that's really nice for folks to hear. Um, I'm running out of time. Uh, oh yeah, I like this quote of, it's, it's remarkable how much people appreciate hearing from you when you don't even want something from them. I think it's a good thing to keep in mind. 
really a lot of what I've been talking about is towards this theme again of building relationships with trust so that you get that honest advice that you might not get elsewhere. And I think as well, like it, it can actually be really helpful from even just a selfish perspective to consider paying it forward and mentoring others from that idea of uh, you learn something better by teaching it. Because um, like if you consider it from an instructor's perspective, um, a, a really good teacher, you know, they might worry about being pushy or condescending. And so even while they take responsibility with those power dynamics to manage the classroom or that relationship, um, you can help them by making eye contact or kind of speaking up and raising your hand when you have questions. Uh, and so to that end, I did find recently this uh, guidebook that ThoughtBot has put in out for, for, for mentorships there. Uh, so that's definitely available as well. Okay, resources, as I'm nearing the end. A uh, whole bunch of articles and references. Uh, so these will have like sample wording that you can use and go into more depth again about a lot of the ideas I mentioned. Uh, even more articles. Uh, podcasts and videos. I'm, I'm, I don't listen to a ton of podcasts, but these ones were, were pretty good. And, and the Ask a Manager one has, a, a, has transcripts that get done, so I can read that really quickly too. Um, blogs in general, I like reference these books. I think they're amazing. They're super smart and thoughtful about these things. Um, and then a variety of these books. The, the first one, Deep Work, I am super obsessed with it. It's all about how to really go deep in your field and, and do meaningful work. Um, the Effective Engineer is really good about like how do you increase your impact. I have some quibbles with like the, the like working in a corporate environment and unconscious bias, that part of things, so I can talk about that later. Um, and The Manager's Path, I haven't actually read that one, but it's by Camille, and I've heard that even though it's like kind of written for managers, it has a lot of good stuff as well about uh, you know, from an individual contributor perspective, kind of things that you might do to improve that relationship. Uh, okay, thank you. <laughs>